Okay, the next test we're going to do is the accelerometer. Which has a faster accelerometer? Okay, let's try this out here. Apple iPad was quicker. iPad. iPad by hair. Okay, so the accelerometer in the iPad is a little bit quicker than the HP touchpad. Does it matter? Again, you decide. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up the browser. And we're going to launch them both at the same time. In fact, they're both in the same spot. And as I look here, I haven't noticed it before, but you have browser, mail, browser, mail. Of course, you can change that up if you want, so it's not a big deal. Okay, let's press the browser button at the same time and see which one brings it up quicker. Okay, seems as if the Apple iPad 2 brought the browser up a little bit quicker than the HP touchpad. Doesn't matter, you decide. Now, the browser here, both of them opened up a blank page. The browser on the touchpad, it has the one bar up here. The browser on the iPad has a URL area here and a search area there. I would prefer if they were merged as one. I don't like when they have uh, separate things like that. Again, do you care? Again, that's something for you to decide. Okay, the way it handles multiple windows, you don't have tab browsing on either device, uh, but the way it handles the multiple windows is a little bit different. I'll show you it on here. Let's just pull up a website here. Let's just go to Apple here, apple.com, and let's go to Apple here as well. All right, now we're going to go to a second window here, and I'm gonna click on the button to bring a second window. Now on this device, what it does, uh, everything you use is in a card metaphor. So any program you have is a card. So what it did is it took that first web page, brought it back as a card, and then opened up another card. So if I wanted to switch between them, I hit the home button here, and now I have two web browsers here, and I can just switch between them that way. Okay. Now, if you want to do the same thing on the Apple iPad 2, you have a second window button here. Minimizes your first window, and then you can go to a new page by clicking this here. Brings it up. Let's see. Let's just go, since YouTube is selected here, let's just go to YouTube and uh, just leave it there for the second page. So if you want to toggle between the two pages here, you hit this button up here. It brings your pages there, and then you go back to the first one. So very similar in execution very different in the way it looks so I mean you're only put it pushing two button presses on each one to go to the other page okay so very similar in browser performance only difference being you have the unified search and URL bar here which I personally prefer but you might not care now since we have iCloud on both of these here we have the Apple page here we're gonna do a pinch to zoom test on both devices I'm going to try and do it at the same time and try and do it at the same speed and you can see one if one is better than the other or if they're doing the same and whatnot. So let me just try that out right now. We're going to zoom in. It's kind of hot here and my hands are kind of sticky. So let's switch hands and see if uh, that had any factor in it. So the Apple iPad 2, the pinch to zoom seems, seems a little bit more responsive than the HP touchpad. Does it matter to you? Again, you decide. Okay, the next one is a no-brainer. Most people, even people on the street know that the Apple iPad has a lot of apps. Apps on the HP Touchpad is one of the things where it's lacking. Right now, I believe there's about 4,500 HP Touchpad apps. There's over 100,000 dedicated Apple iPad 2 apps. So right there, you know, you're going to be able to get more apps on the Apple iPad 2 than the HP Touchpad. It stands to reason because Apple is, I believe, second in the mobile phone market. So their app store is going to be very large. The 
Palm devices, or excuse me, the HP WebOS devices have less than 1% market share in the mobile phone market. I believe Apple has around 27%. So it stands to reason that the app catalog on WebOS is going to be much smaller than the app catalog on the Apple iPad. So right there, you know that the Apple iPad has more apps. So if that's important to you, the Apple iPad gets the point there. Now, we're going to come back to the browser in a minute. We're going to do a search, but I wanted to cover a couple other things before that. So we're going to hit the home button on both devices here and try and hit them at the same time. And the HP touchpad was a little quicker going back to the home screen there. The thing I want to hit next is box.net and cloud storage. Apple just recently announced iCloud. Now iCloud is a way for you to sync your devices your multiple Apple devices through the cloud. So you can send pictures, music, things of that nature up to the cloud and sync it to other devices. You get five gigabytes of storage when you do that. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but like I said, you get five gigabytes of cloud storage here and then you, there's some convoluted things where uh, you can only store things for 30 days and then it expires. And if you want to learn more about iCloud, go to the Apple website and find out. On the HP touchpad, you have a thing called Box.net. Now, Box.net is an independent company. It's not affiliated necessarily with HP. It's not owned by HP. But just by buying this device, you get 50, 50, 50 gigabytes of cloud storage with Box.net. So basically, you can upload anything to it. You can upload any of your files to it, and your limit is 50 gigabytes which is 10 times the limit of iCloud. Now, like I said, I'm not going to get too much into it other than that, but just by sheer volume, you get more storage ability on Box.net, and you're not limited to HP products. Box.net, you can use it if you have a Mac. You can access your uh, Box.net files from it. If you have a PC, you can access it. If you have a Linux device, you can access your Box.net account. You're not limited to being in the Apple ecosystem, or the HP ecosystem in this case. So for this, the solution here is larger and a little bit more open than you get on the Apple iPad 2. Does it matter to you? Again, you decide. Now since we're on the topic of iCloud, iCloud was something that was announced recently, and at the same event, Apple announced iOS 5. Now as at the filming, at the time of filming this video, Apple iOS 5 is only available in a beta form to developers and I'm not going to spend $100 to try it out. I'm just going to get it when it comes to me in the fall. So in the fall of 2011 is when iOS 5 is going to come out. But again, at the time of filming this video, you still, when you buy an Apple iPad, you can't just use it out of the box. You can't just open it up in the car and fire it up and use it. You have to actually attach it to a computer. So in that way, it's just by virtue of what it is, it's a secondary device. Now you could get it started up at an Apple store, but if you went to Best Buy and bought it or some other store and bought it and went home with it, you couldn't actually use it unless it was synced to an iTunes account. At this point in time, you can buy a HP touchpad and fire it up on the way home and start using it if you wanted to. That's the way it is right now, okay? That's going to change. Now, a couple other things that are gonna change when iOS 5 comes out, the notification system's gonna change. You're not gonna get that annoying blue notification that comes in the center here. You're going to get notifications that drop down from the top, much like Android, much like WebOS. So, Apple took a page out of Android's book and out of WebOS's book for their notifications. The Apple iPad 2 is also going to get some limited widgets. So there's going to be a couple things that change on the Apple iPad 2. I'm just giving you this information so you know what it's all about. Current time, you can use this straight out of the box. Current time, you cannot use this out of the box. It's not a laptop replacement right now. But with iOS 5, it might be a laptop replacement at some point. Does any of that matter to you? Again, you decide. Okay, we're getting into the home stretch here. Just a couple more things to cover here. Okay, I just cleared the cache, I just cleared the history, I just cleared the cookies, all that good stuff on both browsers. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull up 
a couple of Google searches and see the performance on both of these devices here. So let's click on the browser here, click on the browser here, and we're going to look up a term here on both devices. Let's go to the search here, and let's see. Now one thing of note, while I'm in here, I'm just going to compare the keyboards here. Keyboard over here has a row of numbers. Keyboard over here does not have a row of numbers. You can actually resize this keyboard here, small, medium, large, and extra small. The stock keyboard on the Apple iPad 2, you cannot do that with. So, does that matter to you? Again, you decide. Personally, I really like the row of numbers up top above the, the letters there. And also, if you press the shift button, you get a capitalized representation of the, of the letters here, and then a lowercase when you pull it back down. Over here, you just have to look at the arrow if it's highlighted or not, if you, to see if it's upper or lowercase. I personally like this option, this keyboard, better. But does it matter to you? Again, you decide. Now let's look up something here. Let's just look up, let's just put a generic term in here. We're gonna use beaches, okay? And we're gonna hit enter on both devices at the same time and see which one is quicker. Apple iPad 2 was much quicker than the HP touchpad. Now, let's see, why don't we just pick the first selection here, which is beaches.com, which I think is a resort. Let's see if we can click this both at the same time and see which one brings up the page quicker. It's close, it's neck and neck. Apple iPad 2 is quicker. And it seems to be a little bit different looking too. You have a full page here, and then you have everything a little bit bigger over here. I'm wondering if one is a mobile version and the other isn't. I mean, they look the same, so maybe it's not. Okay, um, different graphic here. Well, the Apple iPad 2, I'm, I'm looking at it right now, the Apple iPad 2 was quicker, but there's a flash animation here. That's one thing that I was going to actually go into a YouTube page and show you, but I might as well go and cover it here. You have flash here, you don't have flash here, that's been widely publicized, that Apple does not want flash on their devices. Flash is on the HP touchpad, and it works very nicely, very smooth, very nicely over here. So, does flash matter to you? If it does, HP Touchpad wins the round. If it doesn't, again, you decide if it matters. Okay, let's try another search. Again, summertime theme, keeping with that. Let's go with suntan lotion. Let's hit the search on this at the same time. Quicker over here on the HP touchpad that time. Interesting. Okay, this picture inspires me here, a nice family on vacation. Why don't we look up the next search term, keeping along with that theme, let's look up sharks. So let's click over here and we're going to look up sharks on both devices here. Okay, now let's hit the search button at the same time. And see which one's quicker. Okay, Apple iPad 2 by a hair on that one. Now we're going to go to the Wikipedia site here, which is the second entry, and we're going to try and click this at the same time here. Okay, Apple iPad is done and still working over here on the HP touchpad. Okay. All right, took a little bit longer over here and it didn't really run to the page the same. Of course, both of them here don't necessarily have all the fonts here 
and uh, that might have had something to do with it, but it was clearly quicker. So it seems that when Flash is involved, like on the Beach's website, obviously there's more stuff to render, so it's going to take a little bit longer, but it didn't take the HP touchpad much longer to render a website with Flash on it as compared to the Apple iPad 2 rendering the same site without Flash on it. The HP Touchpad did beat the Apple iPad 2 in a Google search and came a close second in another Google search. But the Apple iPad 2 seemed a little bit more consistent in its speeds in looking things up. So in these tests, it was neck and neck between the devices, but the consistency has to go to the Apple iPad 2 that it was consistently a little bit quicker than the HP Touchpad in my tests here. So it's up to you. Was it a negligible difference in speed? Was it something you can deal with? Was it something where you just feel that the consistency that you see in the iPad 2 is better? Again, it's for you to decide.